Welcome to a video from digitalize.com. This video we're going to be looking at the Surface uh, Go 4, which I had since October. I did an initial video, but I thought I'd uh, come back and let you know how I'm getting on with it. I had the original Surface Go, which I used all the time, uh, but it was getting slower and slower and a few different issues, the keyboard wasn't working. So I got the Surface Go 4 when it first came out. Uh, first thing to say actually, the Surface Go 4, Microsoft treats it as a business device uh, and it's not on the consumer Microsoft.com store. You can still find the Surface Go 4 if you go onto the Microsoft.com uh, and go to the store and look for business and then you can buy from Microsoft. So you're, you're still getting it, even if you're a regular consumer you don't have to be a, a, of a business account. But it's just a bit harder to find. So uh, the other thing benefit with that though is it, it comes with Windows 11 Pro and not Windows 11 Home. So like I said, I've been using the Surface Go for a number of years and I thought I'd just update it for letting how I'm getting on with this. So I use mine for uh, meetings a lot with the pen and I've got this slim pen with the Surface Studio and I use the pen on here. So I've had a few people ask me about the pen so I'll look at that. But my, my main use of this is in meetings. I fire up one note and I just take notes on it uh, flat on the desk and um, and then that's that's all in one note and you're stored in there uh, all the time. I also use it for browsing in the evening, I tend to use it in portrait mode like this, uh, maybe without the keyboard attached. And then if I want to send an email or reply to a comment or a video on, on YouTube or Twitter or whatever, you can just use the keyboard on there or, or you can use a touch keyboard. So, But I do tend to, to use it in the evenings rather than something like the Laptop Studio, uh, Surface Laptop Studio, which is quite a big device. This is sort of my browsing device. Um, it's also great for consumption of content as well. So watching videos, well, that, it's great for that. Uh, when I'm traveling, I take it with me. Um, if I don't expect to be doing any video editing or anything that need to some development, then I might not take one of the other devices and just take this because I put everything I need on here. Uh, apart from say Visual Studio, so most of the things that I, I use, especially for meetings, are all on here. So I just take that with me. The only thing is the slim pen um, doesn't charge up from the surface, so I'd either need to take a charger with me, although I just charge it before I go, and, and it's it's fine. It lasts ages, it seems to be. I think I was away for about three days using it then, and I I didn't notice any charge issues. And when I came back, I just charged it back on the laptop studio. Uh, you could use the, the, the round type pens, the, the other pen with the batteries in, uh, that would work perfectly well. I did get a new keyboard as well because my old keyboard wasn't working. So this is the new new keyboard which, which I got. So like I said, when I'm travelling, using it in meetings, um, using it for emails, that kind of thing. And then hanging around the airports, it was great because I was able to check my email, browse the web and still... Um, send emails and do post videos and that kind of thing um, but I can, I'll use this for uh, watching some movies on there as well because Netflix and there's a Disney app and, and everything else so some people did ask me about the sensitivity of the pen so I have got on here I don't think I can really show this without too much reflections but there is no issues with the pen at all it doesn't do any digital marking or anything like that there's no gradients on it that I've seen some people sort of talking about there's no dead spots it's very smooth and works absolutely fine as you see I put a pressure sensitive on there so no issues with the, the pen so far people have asked me about responsiveness it's it's very responsive everything just works on it uh, Windows 11 works fine on there I've got Edge installed um, I use Edge all the time and that works great the only issue I've noticed with uh, with Edge or with the sort of performance in general, in responsiveness, is the touch screen can be a little bit sensitive. So if you've got a web page like that and I want to scroll up and down like that, that's fine. But every now and again I'll put my finger down to scroll and it will actually click the link rather than scrolling. So uh, especially if you're on say some kind of forum site like that where I'm scrolling around and I might look to, to, to scroll on it and it actually ends up act clicking on the link rather than scrolling. See, it's not doing it now. Um, it's probably when I sat with it in front of me like that, 
and uh, it can be a bit sensitive so I haven't tried recalibrating it so from from when I initially did it so probably I should do that and, and check that but but it's quick to responsive enough you know you're changing tabs it, it just it just works fine you see me loading one note there that works fine I do some plugin on here I've got office installed again office works fine um, See, I just clicked at the link there to load it up. See, it loads up straight away. So there's no real lag or anything, especially browsing, media consumption, no problems at all with that. Um, it's quick to start up as well because it's got Windows Hello. And um, Factory Life people ask me about it, and I've found this really difficult to quantify it because I tend to charge it up when I'm not using it. I maybe put it, plug it on the desk. Um, but I wouldn't do that all the time, so maybe I charge it every few days, something like that. But uh, to give you an idea, I was at an airport for virtually the full day. I was watching uh, videos on it, using it for email, and uh, it, I think I was at the airport sort of six, seven hours, something like that. And I virtually had this on all the time, and there's still plenty of battery life left in it. So probably guessing about 12 hours continual use, but my usage is I use it for a bit, then I come back and use it again, and I think, oh, I better charge it up. So it might be every two, three days or something like that. Um, I've also found it great for some other uses on it as well. I use Sonos and it actually, the Sonos client, so the Sonos client works really well on here as well. So um, browsing music, yes, you can do it from your phone, but actually quite you know, like doing it from here. So you can sort of pick the tablet up and uh, yeah, choose your music and, and so on. So I actually like using it for that sort of media stuff as well. So if I want to listen to music, I pick that up instead of the phone because I quite like that. Um, there is some other things that I've been doing with it as well. I actually got some music software installed on here. So I've got a couple of Chaos uh, Korg synths installed, and they work just great. So but what I found works best with the synths is I do have a USB audio interface and a USB. Uh, MIDI connector, so uh, they're currently plugged into the dock. So I'll plug it. I put it into dock, but there is um, USB C port on it, so you can plug a little USB sub in there. And there's the the software synth. Obviously, it works better through uh, the audio system and mixer, so that's what I use the audio for the uh, USB audio. Here's another one. This is a Korg Electribe uh, drum machine. And again, I think it's quite fun to when you're on the road, take a pair of headphones and uh, yeah, you can have a play about with that. But if I wanted to use it in a serious application, then I would use a USB hub, plug in the uh, a USB MIDI controller and an audio interface, and then I can get it going through a mixer. I can just, in, this, in my case, connected by the dock there and now that's connected so I can control that um, through the MIDI so let me show you so I've got it plugged in there and I'm controlling it from the MIDI keyboard that's just using the PC speaker obviously you can use it with a USB audio interface and have that if you get the rest of the rig it will run the uh, music store uh, door software as well so it's in a nice little convenient package you can run those things so the screen size makes it actually quite nice you can do the you know the touch screen I can do real-time controls using the touch screen as well so my initial first few months of using it are doing exactly the job I want it to do it's not my main machine um, but it is a machine I like to use, especially in the evenings, for meetings and when travelling and for doing the odd fun thing as well. I guess you could put some basic games on there and um, some music software as well. So it's doing exactly what I want it to do. I did get the keyboard and because my old keyboard wasn't working and that works great. And I've got the pen. If you haven't got any other Surface device and you want to use it for meetings, I would recommend getting one of the pens. There's ones you can get from Microsoft plus there's cheap alternatives as well. Anyway, if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, I'm going to carry on using my Surface Go. If there's enough questions, I'll do another video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.